So up to this point, we've been calculating cell potentials, always under standard conditions. And in this video, we're going to look at how we can um, qualitatively assess the cell potential under non-standard conditions. So reminder that the cell potential under standard conditions is E naught cell. So this little degree sign here, this not symbol, um, is indicating that it is a standard cell potential, which means that we are at standard laboratory conditions, 25 degrees Celsius and one atmosphere of pressure, and that all aqueous molarities are equal to one molar. So our non-standard cell potential is just E cell. Um, and what we're gonna be focusing on is how changing concentrations can change our cell voltage. And the main reason why we're gonna focus on concentration, um, temperature and pressure can have an effect as well, but the main reason why we're going to focus on the concentrations is that this is something that just happens any, anyways. As a cell functions, reactants are being consumed and products are being produced. So as a cell operates, our concentrations are constantly changing. which means that our voltage is constantly changing anyways. Even if we start with a standard cell, um, as soon as it begins to operate, initially your voltage would be the standard potential, but as soon as it begins to operate, your concentrations are changing and therefore your cell potential or your cell voltage will be changing as well. So we are consuming reactants and producing products. As our cell operates. So if we think about what our cell potential really represents, we said that it was a difference between these uh, for our standard potential the standard state of our cell and the most stable state of our cell, AKA equilibrium. For our non-standard cell potential, um, it's representing a difference between just the current state of our cell, wherever that happens to be, and the most stable state, AKA equilibrium. Um, this comparison should sound familiar to you from our equilibrium unit. Our current state of our system is described by Q, a reaction quotient, and our equilibrium state is described by K, the equilibrium constant. So our cell potentials are related to the difference between Q and K. So the difference between current state, our reaction quotient, and the equilibrium state. So a larger value of E cell means that we are farther away from equilibrium. There is a bigger difference between the state of our cell currently and its most stable or equilibrium state. So what this means is as a cell operates, its voltage is constantly decreasing. We know that reactions always proceed towards equilibrium, equilibrium. So no matter where you start from in an electrochemical cell, whether it be a standard or non-standard starting point, that voltage that's produced initially 
is the maximum you're ever going to get out of that cell. Because as soon as that cell starts to operate, it's getting closer and closer and closer and closer to equilibrium, which means that the difference between Q and K is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So our potential is getting smaller and smaller and smaller as well. Um, so as a cell operates, the voltage is constantly decreasing. A dead battery is a battery that has reached equilibrium. Which is when your cell potential reaches zero, when your current state and your equilibrium state are the same thing. There is no difference between the two. So your cell potential goes to zero. Um, in practical applications, batteries die before they reach equilibrium um, because most devices have some minimum voltage required to operate. So as soon as your battery drops below that minimum, um, the battery will be considered useless. Um, for things like AA batteries that you can take out of one device and put into another, you'll sometimes find that you can take a battery that you think is dead out of one device and put it in something else and it will work. And that's just because that other device has a lower minimum. So you can get a little bit more life out of your battery sometimes. Um, if you're taking it out of like a really powerful flashlight and putting it into your TV remote probably has a lower minimum. I don't actually know, but that seems reasonable to me. Um, but anyhow, just an example. Um, so we can know that throughout a galvanic cell's life, the voltage is going to constantly decrease, but we can also compare whether a non-standard cell's potential is going to be greater than, less than, or equal to the standard potential just based on the concentrations involved. So at any point, um, we can compare a non-standard to a standard potential based on relating this difference between Q and K to our potentials. So for the standard state, of an electrical, electrochemical cell, all molarities are one. So our reaction quotient is equal to one. Remember that Q is calculated as the concentration of products over reactants raised to their coefficients. Um, but if all of our molarities are one, doesn't matter what combination of reactants and products you have, you end up with one divided by one, which equals one. Um, so for the standard state, Q is always equal to one. Um, for redox reactions, K is generally huge, like really, really, really huge. So our equilibrium constant is much, much greater than one. So if that's kind of our comparison, Q is really, really big at the standards, or sorry, say that over again, K is really, really big. Um, for the standard state, Q is equal to one. So for a non-standard cell, If Q for your non-standard cell is less than one, if K is really big and we made Q smaller, we've gotten farther away from equilibrium. So our cell is farther from equilibrium than it would be in the standard state. which means our potential for the non-standard cell is going to be greater 
than the potential for a standard cell of that same reaction. If our concentrations are such that Q is greater than one, so now if at the standard state we have K is huge and Q is one, our non-standard cell K, uh, Q is larger, that puts us closer to equilibrium, which means there's a smaller difference. So our non-standard potential is smaller. So here our non-standard cell is closer to equilibrium. Then in the standard cell, so our non-standard potential is less than the standard potential. And if Q is equal to one, you're in relatively the same position. So your non-standard and standard potentials will be the same. Um, regardless of what your concentrations are, if your Q comes out to one, it's the same potential as the standard state. So as Q gets smaller, your cell potential gets bigger because we're farther from equilibrium. As Q gets bigger, your cell potential gets smaller since we're closer to equilibrium. And whenever Q is equal to one, your actual potential is equal to the standard potential. So we can use this idea of calculating our reaction quotient to give us some idea of what our non-standard cell potential looks like. So for example, we're going to determine if the non-standard potential E cell for the cell described below greater than, less than, or equal to the standard cell potential for this reaction. So the reaction that we're looking at is copper two aqueous at a one molar concentration reacting with solid iron to produce copper plus aqueous at a 0 0.1 molar concentration and iron two aqueous also at a 0 0.1 molar concentration. So what we're going to need to do here is to write the equilibrium expression, calculate the value of Q, and figure out which of these situations we're in. If Q is less than one, E cell is bigger. If Q is greater than one, E cell is smaller. If Q is equal to one, then they are the same. So pause here, take a minute and try to solve that on your own. So the first thing we need to do here is write our equilibrium expression so that we'll be able to calculate Q. Just like any other equilibrium expression, we will have products on top divided by the reactants raised to the power of their coefficients, ignoring liquids and solids. So if we look at our states of matter, we see that we have one solid here. So this guy is gonna get left out of our expression, but both of our products are aqueous. So those will be included. So on the top, we'll have the concentration of Cu plus, and that gets squared since it has a coefficient of two, times the concentration of Fe2 plus, and then on the bottom, we have Cu2 plus squared. So at this point, all we need to do is plug in the concentrations that we were given to determine our value for Q. So our concentration of Cu2 plus was 0.1, our concentration of Fe2 plus was 0.1, and our concentration of 
Cu2 plus was one molar. So if we plug those guys in, we have 0.1 squared times 0.1 over one squared gets us a value for Q of 0 0.001. Q is less than one, which tells us that we are farther from equilibrium than we would be in the standard cell. So that means our potential gets larger. Since there is a bigger difference between, oops, one at the highlighter, since there is a bigger difference between our current state and equilibrium in potential energy, we have um, a larger cell potential. So we can also calculate the value of the E cell exactly. Um, that is not something that we're going to, uh, that I'm not going, that is not something I'm going to ask you to do in this course, but I think it is useful to see how that can be done or where this mathematical relationship is coming from um, with Q being less than one makes this larger. Um, and this equation tells us that E cell is equal to the standard cell potential minus um, a bunch of constants times the natural log of Q. So we can see that the cell potential is related to both, or the non-standard cell potential is related to both the standard cell potential as well as the value of the reaction quotient. So when Q is less than one, the natural log of Q is negative, we are subtracting a negative value, so that ends up with E cell being larger. So again, I will never ask you to use this equation, but I think it's useful for you to see um, where that relationship is coming from.